Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're holding our monthly technical seminar. We're going to be working on a Silver Cloud 3. The customer did say when he started it up in the morning on fast idle, put it in reverse, he had to use both feet to stop it because it took off like a bat out of hell. Uh, this is a shake back. Yeah, stop. but I mean, it's, it's touching the wheel cylinder, right? <laughs> What's that? The brake is the brake drum is touching the wheel. Wheel cylinder, but not the mechanical expender. Should be right up against it. These should be in. Well, but no, your shake stop, your shake no. back is going to keep it from going. No, these should be in, and this should be out. Right. So that you're up against a drum. The shake back is mostly for the, for front, the front, and they're solid because right. they are self-adjusting yeah, because solid. they never release. Yeah, they just drag. Yeah. Okay, so that you never have to adjust the fronts. The backs you have to adjust. So, when the drum is back on, just picture this in your mind so you understand. Um, when the drum is on it and you adjust this, the shoes are going to go this way. Okay, and that will press this back against this, which should have essentially zero play in the off position. These, these things are supposed to expand to give you that, not only the totally parking brake. But it's totally off. Okay. Right. Does that make sense now? You're saying okay. the shoes will rotate back just a hair? Well, when you do this, what's going to happen is it's going to spread here. Okay. So it's going to slide these back. These float. This right up here has not, nothing to stop it. This floats oh, totally. Okay. This has a, um, I don't know what they call that. That's a shake back, right? So that one should kind of stay in place. And you can see it's right next to the bottom one, but not the top one. See the difference? Oh, you're right. Okay. Right again, Ronnie. Not at home. <laughs> okay, so what I do is I'm going to try squeezing. That wheel cylinder is not frozen. See how it moves? Yeah, hold yeah. your light there for it. Yeah, that'd be great. And the bottom one, let's see here. So I'm going against the housing. And that one, that one moves too. So that's good news. And they're not wet. Wet's always bad. So what I wanted to do, a lot of times what happens is people will have oversized drums and they'll adjust these adjusters in until there's no more adjustment and, and um, this, what will happen is this will be stuck in the expanded position. So that really throws things off. And inside here, it's, it's kind of like a wedge piece of metal, right, with two solid round rollers. So as you pull that metal through, it pushes out these arms. Like so as you can see, you get lots of dust in these things. Uh, typically, I'll take brake cleaner during a service, spray it off, and spray this off. I'm going to dump this in a trash can. It's a good idea to lube it. It's a great, great idea. And I'll show you what I use. It's called TriFlow Bicycle Lubricant. And I usually put... Is that the sticky stuff? No. Oopsie. I just put a couple drops on there. You don't want to put a whole lot in there. You can even put a drop on these little pivots because it's all mechanical. This one was working, it's just out of adjustment. You can even put a drop up here. I've seen where these freeze too and they don't uh, release. You see, if I put a drop up there, it should work its way down there and this should work its way down there. So, In the old days, this dust would have been the asbestos? It could be right now too. Oh, great. <coughs> <laughs> Mesothelioma. That's right. That's the tech term. Now, so you adjust it with the drums, huh? Well, yeah. See that? I'm not dead yet. This is short fiber asbestos. You don't get mesothelioma. Oh, see? Thank you. <laughs> this is why we're bringing it out here. Right. You just get black lung. Agree, Where's right? the canary? Where's the canary? Do you want to mention how you can screw those in to screw the brake drum off too on the two other ones? Oh, well, not these. These. Yeah. There's, there's two other holes here. If you get a brake drum that's stuck on there, that's great, Greg. Um, and it doesn't want to come off. These are quarter 28 on the silver cloud, and you screw bolts in until you pull it out enough to where you can use a slide hammer or whatever else you have that's to. That's what those two are for. Right. That's what the extra holes are for. So these do not have to be super tight unless the drum has got a lot of corrosion here and it doesn't want to. But when you tighten that bolt, that wheel, it's going to definitely come in. Okay, these screws are really tight, or at least the first one I tried. See, it doesn't want to turn. 
So, there's a slick little tool you can buy at Harbor Freight sells them, even I think. It's, it's called an impact driver. So, you can put sockets on it for bolts, or you can use screwdriver type sockets. Hit in the right direction, you hit it with a hammer and it drives it loose. I guess they use these on motorcycles a lot, right? For all the screws they have on the engines and stuff. And Chevy. And Chevy. Yeah. So that's all it took to break it loose. Hmm? That's all it took to break it loose. That's it, yeah. Okay, where's my, where did I leave that slide hammer? <laughs> You see it, Greg? And I don't recommend if you use something like this to just keep going in one spot. You want to walk around. And you got to watch out when you get near the end. Sometimes I like to come off in a hurry. Here we go. Okay, let's check wheel cylinders real quick. <laughs> Moves, right? That's nice. Yeah, that's good. So those are good. This is not frozen. We can put a drop of oil. Whatever I love that. What about the alignment? Is, is there a gap on this one too, like on the other side? Slight, yes. Slight one. So. This mechanism just gets a little, I don't like to put a whole lot in, and I can't, you can't really get to the lower one that well. So we'll just put, put the little drips here. Over here. I know. When you pulled off that thing, you didn't do the star pattern. When I pulled it off, yeah. I'll tighten it that way. Though. Okay, here's how, here's how Ronnie adjusts the brakes, okay? Disconnect this rod, disconnect your springs. We just looked at those expanders, made sure they weren't frozen, the linings look good. So the adjuster is right up here. Okay, you can tell if you get to one of these adjusters and you see that just a little bit sticking out, first of all, you probably have worn out shoes and worn out drums. Uh, this one's is out a long way, that means it's not adjusted. So what I do is I keep tightening it while turning the wheel. Now tightening means you're expanding those shoes like I talked about mm -hmm. and pushing it back to these mechanical expanders. That needs a lot of adjustment, doesn't it? Now it's starting to grab. But I like to tighten them till I cannot move this thing. Then you know the brake is fully applied. And it should be against those expanders. Then you back off. Well, then I do something else. Eventually I will back off though. Okay. And it, it, it goes in quarter turns. It's that, that cone that turns out, it's got four sides to it. So it, 
they're like clicks. Okay, that's good and locked up. We'll go to the other side and lock this one up too. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting both brake drums, the shoes, in the fully applied position. And that's when your brake pedal should feel resistance, is when it's in the fully applied position. There's usually about a half an inch or one inch from the top before it actually feels full? Uh, it, it depends, yeah. They should drop about an inch, maybe an inch and a half max, full application. So it, it depends. A lot of these, there, there's a rubber stop under the brake pedal for the fire. Uh, for the firewall, those will deteriorate and fall away, so the pedal will be higher on some cars and uh, replace that. There's a lot of adjustments. I don't recommend people yeah, I doing. Just looking at all the rods. Yeah, there's a lot of. So both of these are locked up. And if you look at this expander, it doesn't go in and out. That means it's squashed all the way. Okay. And it's up against the shoes. So what you want is you take out all your play in here, right there. So so you're at the fully applied, and then you pull this all the way back and the pin should just drop down. So as you can see, the pin's not even close now. So I have to back this off to line it up. And it's important to do this without the springs on. That, that way you don't get any pullback. Okay, so we still got ways to go. Remember how this was screwed in a long way yeah, so that yeah. the threads were sticking out? And there's one other thing I want to show you before we do this. So up front here. Hold on, let me All right. Hold on, let me